At its most basic, an API is simply a way to interact or communicate with an application. For example, if you're integrating Firebase into your app, you're using its API to interact with it. Similarly, Vue has a specific way for us to interact with it, like template blocks or lifecycle hooks. But Vue's features and functionality is split up into multiple APIs. It decouples non-essential features from the core functionality so that we can add them only if we need to. For example, we can use the provide and inject APIs that's included in the core package for simple state management. If we need something more complex though, we can add the Vuex API. Unfortunately, this means beginners are sometimes confused about where to start or which API to use for their web application. So let's do a quick overview of Vue's APIs and also explain how we'll cover them in this course. Vue is one of the few modern JavaScript frameworks that can be used to create full single-page applications or standalone components that can be dropped into an existing web page. What we want to do determines which one we pick. The global API is used to add standalone components to an existing web page or site. It's just a file with the core view library, bundled and minified. We can download and host it ourselves, or grab the hosted link from a CDN, like JS Deliver. The application API is used to create single-page applications, like Netflix. To use it, we create a project with the Vue CLI, or Vite, and compile it to a working application once development is finished. This series will start with the application, then cover the global API once you're more familiar with Vue. Both the global and application APIs use two other APIs. We can think of them as the main ones, in other words, the way we use Vue. The Options API separates component data and functionality into different sections, known as options. It's easy to learn and is suitable for small to medium-scale applications. The Composition API combines all component data and functionality into a single section. It's slightly more difficult to learn and is recommended for large-scale applications. One of the great things about Vue is that we don't have to choose one over the other. We can use both in our application. There's also the newer script setup, which is a different way for us to use the Composition API. This course will start with the options, then cover the Composition API, and end with the script setup. As we mentioned earlier, Vue's functionality can be extended with additional APIs, typically referred to as plugins. These are only added to an application if they're needed and work with both the options and composition APIs. A few examples would be Vuex as a state management system for larger apps. The Vue router, which helps us load components and navigate between pages. The Vue test utilities, that help us test our components and applications. In this series, we'll cover the most commonly used plugins like Vuex, the router, test utilities, and so on. There are APIs that aren't specific to any framework, but may still be needed in our project. A few examples would be Jest or Mocha and Chai to perform unit tests. Firebase tools to help us view and manage integration with its services, like the Firestore database. Or Tailwind CSS to help us design lightweight, beautiful user interfaces. In this series, we'll cover commonly used external APIs, frameworks, and services that you'd need in an app, like Jest, Firebase, Tailwind, etc. Vue allows us to develop our apps with either JavaScript or TypeScript. TypeScript is a strongly typed language from Microsoft that transpiles its code into native JavaScript. In this series, we'll use JavaScript as the language, but we do cover how to set up and use Vue with TypeScript later on. In the next video, we'll set up a development environment to create Vue apps quickly and easily. Thank you for watching, we'll see you in the next one.